Yeah, it was, was like, it was like oh, Sega. Oh, who's I this chocolate like dog here? <laughs> well, He's here to record puppy. us. I was like, we're pretty much full right now. If Eric hey, joined that would be cool. This is AI. Do not Sky worry. West. How many people... <laughs> How many I love people you brother. legally allowed to have in a podcast? Testing. We're allowed Einstein to have a friend dry. Of heil, heil, heil. Testing. Kanye test. AJ still needs to join. Dale still needs to join. And Paul. Join? No, nope. I join. What? Never mind. Never mind. Right? Never mind. Wait, what about joining? Never mind. I don't know how. <laughs> you <laughs> looking at some behind the scenes thing? Don't worry about it. Of. Don't worry about it. Baba Bowie. <laughs> so that's not gonna be in the recording. I'm just letting you know. Somebody's got an echo. How can you say you love her if you can't even eat her poo? <laughs> Is it officially started recording? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's recording. But we're not. I, yes. I, I will edit all this out. <laughs> Why? You should just include this garbage oh, nah. in front of it and then play the theme song. Welcome back to Terrible Tirades, a podcast that allows old friends to laugh, banter, get serious, or none of that. Thanks so much for stopping in, and we hope you enjoy the conversation today as we talk about one of the biggest hobbies in the world, games. As always, my name is Sean, and I'm joined by my co-hosts Dale, Paul, Adam, Christian, and a special guest, AJ. AJ. I'm not going to allow any of them to introduce themselves because that would allow people to actually understand who they're listening to. But hi, everybody. How you doing? Uh, Magical. Yeah, uh, yeah, I am. Well, we're getting more and more people on the podcast and it's awesome. I love it. But it's getting to the point to where <laughs> we're, we have a lot of like really familiar faces. And at the same time, people are there's no con- continuity in this show whatsoever and i kind of love it but it's also kind of silly i don't know how are there's, we going to compete with the marvel universe if we don't have at least 25 characters in any given time <laughs> that's most true. of which aren't in any individual episode that's do we have true. do we have more listeners or people on the on the podcast <laughs> we should try to keep abreast of that we sh- for every listener we need someone on the podcast I can't wait till we hit a million. Just skip all courts full of people shouting different opinions <laughs> about like religion and video games and the best way to masturbate secretly in a hotel room. And if you're listening all the right now, are come you're up. invited to the next episode. <laughs> what if we got to a you're point invited where to that hotel room? It was all of us and all our friends and family members just all in Discord just ranting about nonsense. I will Maybe. say, Dale, you mentioned religion, which, by the way, I, I would like everyone to know, religion has been the worst viewership uh, <laughs> or least downloaded episode Interesting. that we Thank have God. done. But yet someone reached out to you. That is true. About that, who was another podcaster slash author. Yes. Slash author. Dale, if you've Authors? read... The author, chat. I don't even know her. You would know <laughs> oh, exactly I, what we're talking about. I wanted to look into her while okay. I was at work, but I didn't <laughs> get a chance to. I was too busy fighting with the weather. But, uh, yeah, I have a feeling that we would have some fun conversations with this lady. I have a feeling that she's an author in the same way that David Lebehart is an author. Who that? Yeah, so, uh, is um, he was on Tim and Eric and uh, check it out. Hey, don't lot. disrespect him. He's an expert or, on aliens or anybody. I'm not going to add any context to that, but she's going to hear this, and I'm going to lose one of my like two followers on Instagram. All right, <laughs> simmer down. Yeah, bro. I thought we were going to have fun conversations I, with this lady. Minute, I don't even know who she is yet. Oh no, I would like her to join. That sounds fun. 
I think anybody that listens to this podcast though, has got to at least, uh, you know, uh, have some sense of humor, and uh, they'll be like, "That's okay." I mean, you can edit or that not. out if you. I'm I'm no, just no, guessing no, based on it's two there. screenshots. That, that not exactly fair. There. I yeah. also base my opinion on people based on very few interactions and broad generalizations. That's yeah. the American way. Yep. Yeah. I walk up. Yeah. I'm a Mormon juggalo. Judge me. Anyway, I mean... back to what we're talking about. So <laughs> today's topic is video games. Um, as I showed you all before we started recording, I have a very basic outline of how this could go um what i didn't show you was just this article because i love current events as you know but uh, this article was written in january of this year and it was just the title is how many gamers are there uh with 2023 statistics and it's not going to surprise you to say you know there's a ton so 2023, according to the latest data, I don't know what data they're referring to exactly. I think they're going off of downloads or software updates for video games. That is uh, readily accessible type of information. I don't know where you'd find it, but I'm pretty certain that that's where they got this. Uh, according to their data that they have, there are approximately 3.09 billion active video gamers video gamers worldwide that figure has risen over 1 billion in just seven years as a 32 percent increase so half the planet there's eight yeah yeah eight billion so just under half got them uh, they better not be counting wonderful. bots That's who's wonderful. the weird one now <laughs> mom There's a lot of bots on runescape they're not real people i hate the bots Damn, on RuneScape. They are. they're the worst <laughs> Yeah, there's no bots in board gamers. If you own this a bot out simulation, there, fuck we're you. all gamers. <laughs> RuneScape. All right, well, Dude, you, know I hope so. you, brought up, you brought up RuneScape and bots. What do you think? In my mind, okay, I think bots are probably one of the most harmful things to an MMORPG. But I may be mistaken. So what are the most harmful things to the gaming industry? Okay, I'm not going to talk about MMOs specifically at this point, but the gaming industry in general, is it hacking? Is it torrents? Is it uh, botting? Is it what? What is it? Microtransactions. You beat Maybe. me to it. You beat yeah. me to it. I was definitely going to say microtransactions. Or, or so my brother was harassed by some people playing CSGO which they were like an underground league of like super racist trolls who like posted swastikas everywhere. And just because my brother like kicked them from a CSGO game because they were being assholes, they took a picture of him graduating. They posted his full name and address and made it their profile picture and proceeded to just like post like all kinds of like mm. fucked up shit in his name everywhere. And then would just like constantly harass him from like all forms of, social media so like like threatening trolls like that probably yeah, but is that idea. just gaming or is that everything right I mean, now it's just gaming but like you know when when you're playing league of legends and someone's like you should legit commit suicide i mean it, you know I've, I've i've broken several keyboards because of people in league of legends the people are the worst part of gaming Trolls. People are. I love it. Yeah, so we need more bots. <laughs> we don't want to keep the bots in the answer. <laughs> we just need a game with all bots. How many times as kids did we have two people over, two N64 controllers, and three bots in the map and just yeah. had a great time? I don't or play maybe. a lot of games with bots, but in my experience, games like, uh, let's see, like Fortnite and PUBG, they added bots, which I don't think is a good thing, but they did it to kind of make it seem like uh easier to play for new people who would typically get like zero kills for a whole game and now they can target easy targets and make it seem like it's a more populated dude i can fucking win experience. now do you I think they did win that because of that. do you think they did that because they wanted to make it easier to win 
Or do you think they did that because their servers were becoming more and more unpopulated? So they wanted to make it to where it was easier for the people who do want to play to find matches. I 100% uh, think it's just a confidence booster thing to get you to that's play. That's what more. I think. I don't know how the technical aspects of it work, but I assume that people were getting tired of... Because as a gaming community grows, like especially with a game like Fortnite or PUBG, like the casual to not good players eventually fall off, and then it's populated mostly by people really good at the game targeting casuals. So they're probably trying to make it like a confidence boost to get people... To be like, hey, I played a game and I got six kills. Maybe I'll play again because at least I can get kills now. Things like that. Yeah, I could see that. Those bots can be useful, I think, in in terms of playing like Warzone. You know, those battle royale type games to apply pressure to. Like if you're and to make it more interesting while you're looting, so it doesn't feel like you're playing looting simulator every time to like come across some action while you're racing to the circle or some shit like that. It's like applying that healthy pressure, something to fight, something to do. So out of the group here, how many of you play games like that, Battle Royale games or like heavily populated games that are still big in, like big in the gaming scene today? Does Roblox count? <laughs> I mean, they probably have Roblox Fortnite. Actually, I know they do. Yeah, I dabble, but I used to play them exclusively for a, a good while. Yeah, I, I dabble. So, question: yep. uh, with the bots on these battle royales, what happens if it's you and just like a bunch of bots? Do they just declare that you're the winner because you're the last human standing? No, they they they'd make you finish the game out, but it's very rarely you versus bots at the end. If the bots are usually so bad at the game, they're easily okay. you can tell their bots from a mile away with just how they move. Or by the fact that their name is like verb noun 23. <laughs> yeah, shitty like those predetermined Xbox Live gamer tags that they ask you if you want to use when you sign up. Things like that. Do you think our AI overlords are going to get better at making those uh, default gamer tags for us or... Are we going to have to keep exercising our creativity? Because I got to tell you, I'm running out of juice. <laughs> I did not yeah, think you were going to say gamer tag. <laughs> it sucks for me because I, I, I cannot have a gamer tag or a username in any format with numbers or X's or anything like that. Like I can't do it, so I have to be creative. Yeah, unique gamer tag is, is pretty pretty sweet. Although I did think of sarcastically making my gamer tag like YOLO swag 420. <laughs> that's taken. There's Bullshit. no, there's no gotta doubt. Be. I got gotta add, be, like bro. Doritos XXX or something. You gotta keep adding a G after swag until it's available. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, quintuple G swag. Didn't didn't you like inherit a gamer tag, Christian or AJ? I can't remember. Like from your dad, like Nuck and Futs Xbox Gangster. Yeah, oh, I made man. that one. You made it under pressure. <laughs> well, the knocking fights one kind of did too, but I remember, I remember my dad had one, and then he made a second one that I inherited called "Going Postal," all one word, no anything else. And then he made AJ one uh, called "Xbox Gangster," all one word. Uh, and then eventually, the "Going Postal" one he let die off, and AJ didn't really play games as much anymore, so I inherited the Xbox Gangster one. And then AJ got to make another new one. So I inherited two in a row until I was able to... I didn't make my first gamer tag until 2014. I still have it. Is your dad still game? No, not really. WV Rebel. That that was one of his new ones. WV Rebel? WV Rebel was the first one. And it was the best one. That's We gotta get, like, plaques of... Gamer tag names handed down like a family crest. Yeah, I was about to say like that's gonna get to the point on my, where on my tombstone, a will. Yeah. <laughs> on my tombstone, I want all my gamer tags on there. <laughs> that people can tie your achievements to your legacy. Mm-hmm. Ooh, your KD ratio. Mm-hmm. <laughs> your yeah, I had Frankie one. from Amir say my uh, my gamer tag was cool. Nice. <laughs> 
I don't think I'm wicked sure. there with all the X's. That was too many X's. It was in between yeah. each letter. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and wicked yeah, as well. So we've talked about... I mean, so we talked about RuneScape, so MMOs, and we talked about uh, gamer tags, which that insinuates Xbox. What what do we think, or what are our fondest memories on consoles? What what are what is the best console? That's a good question. Uh, I was just having that conversation with my cousin, and we're trying to like make the objective case but at the end of the day it has to be like where do you associate all your best gaming memories and for me that era between 2000 and 2010 is just unrivaled um the original xbox with halo halo 2 the xbox 360 and all the games that came out with that uh those two for me i don't know man you got to go back to that classic sometimes some of my best memories in 64 I mean, yeah, yeah, GoldenEye, sure. Smash Bros. How much time did you spend playing Smash with your buddies? Don't lie to me. I know it was a lot. I, met, I did most of my Smash Brothers on GameCube. Oh, most of my Smash yeah. was on N64. Like me and my my friend, he would like when he would stay the night. I would just like set it to like fucking ninety nine lives, and it was like me and him versus two level nine PCs, which sounds pretty pathetic now, but it was fun. So I would say that the games on like N64 and even Super Nintendo, and I you could even throw GameCube in there, like those games cannot be touched by any other thing, a uh, console, just like the quality of them. But I will say I have to give some consideration to the PS2 as the best console because you know just the sheer. Yeah number of games plus the fact that the ps1 library is like 100 percent backwards compatible it's hard to beat that yeah i would say my my head says ps2 is probably the winner but my heart says n64 it's funny because i love the n64 so much and we did not even have one and all my memories come from playing it at your guys's house so there were some pretty great games um, that I will always like think about. I saw you had Perfect Dark on the list, and that I remember just seeing that game, like not even playing it, and just seeing it and being mesmerized. Is but we played bot lobbies. What's that? It's bot lobbies in that. Yeah. Perfect Dark. Yeah. Just all the cool weapons and things you could do in that, and like the changes in perspective. I just hadn't like seen all that before, but we. We when we stayed over, we would play so much Star Wars Pod Racer. Oh yeah! Oh, Pod NASCAR. Racer. We would t- play. I, I can't remember what it was, but some flying game, and that was like my first intro to like inverted controls, and it Star just Fox. felt so cool. Mm-hmm. It might have been Star Fox. Racing, was, Star Fox was pretty sweet. Diddy Kong Racing was good. It, very honestly, very underrated. Like, like there was a lot of shit it had that Mario Kart didn't like. Mm-hmm. Like it was like the adventure mode was just nuts, like fucking I mean, racing a giant races. pig and shit, and yeah, like you had hovercrafts and fucking planes and a fucking elephant genie with a turban and shit. Like it was and every weird. time you'd hit him, he'd go hoo hoo. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, uh, it's safe to say that games of that type of console, like N sixty four, NES. Uh, even I'd even go as far back as uh, PlayStation Two or PlayStation One. They are iconic because they kind of built like what we play today. Even if I, I mean, Mario Party is still a big thing. Mario Kart's still a big thing. Mario franchise is a humongous thing. So you take like I think of N sixty four. Even though I didn't play a ton of Mario uh, Mario games on the N sixty four. It's still something that's carried through into what we play today, like Mario Galaxy and such like that. Um, go ahead, Dale. I was just gonna say, I mean, the first three D game was Mario sixty four on the N sixty four. It was certainly yeah. the first three D Mario, but I mean it, it was it was the first three D game that did three D gaming right. 
There were yeah, a lot I mean, of that's fair. But that's they were, fair. you yeah. know, really Sonic close. 3D Blast on the Sega Genesis, but that was a little bit like it was like dumbed down 3D, like just barely. Yeah, the same yeah. way the Virtual Boy was down. technically, you know, yeah, technically that was the first VR game set, but Virtual <laughs> Boy is just painful. Oh god, the virtual yeah. boy. God, that's probably why Bro. I need fucking glasses today. <laughs> All that black and red, damn. Like Did they should have made an NWO me game. Own one of those? Oh no. I, I owned one and yeah, and, okay. um, and honestly, there was a really fucking good game for that. I mean there was a few oh, there pretty were, good games, what, but the fucking Wario Land for that was fucking good. Okay, that was good. I was gonna say Galactic Pinball. Because it actually had like a 3D space. You yeah. Know, when you hit the puck, it was a puck instead of a ball. When you hit yeah. it up to the top of the pinball thing, it would actually seem like it was far away. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's there was only like a very few games for that. Like I had like yeah, a was about bowling 30. game and a like a like a 3D robot boxing game and that sounds cool. But, yeah. I mean, it, was, it was fun, but it fucked my it eyes. It just hurt up. your eyes and your your neck and your back because you're like, unless you had the perfect height table, yeah. you're going like this to get into it. All right. I'm going to fast forward now into time. He's going one to hack of, us in time. One of my favorite memories of video games is Halo. I, oh, yeah. I played so much Halo and specifically I'm talking Halos 1 through 3 is what I recall playing the most I, after 3 I definitely fell off but Christian I, I remember we stayed over at your, your house for the weekend and I think it was the original Halo right mm-hmm. it was the original Halo and it was the first time I'd ever been introduced to something as fun as that and you had the console. I didn't have it at the time. And I remember we had been playing it all weekend. And we woke up. And you asked me something. I don't remember what what. I don't remember how the conversation went. But I woke up and the, I didn't say words to you. All I did was hold up my hands, mm-hmm. and like. And I knew. Pre- I pretend knew. like I was playing the Xbox with my hands, and that, you're that like, meant, let's let's continue where we left off immediately. Uh, yes, I love. And it was it was awesome because my dad's always been a techie. That's why he had the Xbox to begin with, is because he just loves Microsoft since the dawn of time. And and of course, we had the big the big big TV, uh, the bulky back when the big screens were huge, and then the home theater mm-hmm. system. And, and uh, Halo through that system was just unrivaled. It was the I think Halo to me marked the beginning of the next generation of gaming uh entirely like it changed uh, on a technical level uh on a story level on a graphics level music introduced in a game like i know they there's a lot of good soundtracks in early games but like as far as a cinematic soundtrack that's worthy of movies uh voice acting it's the perfect xbox original game well, and let's not forget the fact that there were FPS games and there were, you know, uh, competitive shooters at the at the mm-hmm. time that existed, but their controls were all very clunky. Halo kind of yeah, pioneered Halo... the yeah, casual shooting that you're still seeing. I mean, it was the great grandfather of all the Call of Duties and yeah, and, and the, even the controller, know, even the battle the concept... royale. Of a next gen controller, like the whole click to aim, left trigger, the grenade, everything was designed for ease of access. You got two weapons, hold this button to switch immediately, this button to. It's just everything you could want to do as the Master Chief, you could do without thinking about it. And every game kind of from then on sort of took that. Halo changed my world for sure because it taught me about networking. Halo is the reason that I ever bought my first Switch, learned how to hook up the Ethernet cables, Uh because we would have, in high school, every Friday night, me and Brian, I think most of you guys know Brian, um, 
we would go over to his house. This was when, you know, right around that time, it just happened to be the right time in history that little CRTs were getting to be cheap. You could pick them up at yard sales. That's what we did. We got four TVs. We had four people who had an Xbox. We hooked them up. Sometimes we get like eight, ten guys there, like every Friday night. That was some of the most fun I've ever had playing a game. Halo Two. Now I love Halo One the most, and you're not, you probably don't you probably hear usually Halo Two, but Halo Two was the first reason that I ever stole internet from someone, and it was because but 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 my neighbor didn't have a secure Wi-Fi back in time. These were like the early early two thousands, and people didn't put passwords on their Wi-Fi. Sometime I had my fucking window open in the middle of winter with my little fucking Wi-Fi adapter out of my three sixty sitting in the window and my mom would be like ah it's 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 cold in your room why the hell you got the window up i'm like well then buy me internet so i could play halo you're spending more on the heating bill right now than you would be paying for internet Checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> and thus a thief was born <laughs> truly it was combat evolved it was all worth it I think that's why I would have to give Xbox like my it has my heart too. I mean, Halo is a mm. huge part of that. Like countless hours doing what you were just saying, Sean. Just playing with Christian too. Just the campaign and you use the word cinematic, Christian, and it, it just so it was so immersive. And Halo Two with Xbox Live and everything we've and. In terms of Xbox Live, our first introduction was Ghost Recon, and we played tons of Ghost Recon, too, but really, Halo 2, matchmaking, the LAN parties, yeah. and just even playing 1v1, pissing each other off. Do, did anybody else... Um, I know I couldn't afford Xbox Live. And we would play on X-Link. Did anybody else play on X-Link? No. I've heard of it, but I never... I know. I don't think I ever did, no. It, it was I, fun. It was fun. You get to meet a lot of poor people who just <laughs> want to play Halo. And it, it's, you know... <laughs> there weren't clans or anything like that, but um, you could always find a match. You could always usually max it out to the 16 people. You had the voice chat. You had a, almost everything you would have on live. You just had to route it through a computer. Interesting. I did. I'd never heard of that X Link before. Yeah, it just it tricks the Xbox into thinking that the games on the internet are uh, on your local network. They're system link games. Okay. Well, you brought up clans. That that's something very unique to the gaming scene. Uh, that. I'm sure all of us at some point have been some kind of like had some kind of affiliation with in one game or the, or another. I mean, heck I was in a, a clan very recently on hold fast. Uh, we're, that's true. That's true. Uh, uh, British or, or EU clan we go stand in a, a line battle and shoot at each other. I but, even joined you the one time. It was a new experience. Yeah. But what clans have you all what what clans do you have memories of and are they still around today uh and i was uh part of a huge clan in halo 2 i was actually ran it with my cousin uh called kos in the halo 2 days and i reckon we had probably about anywhere from 100 to 200 people in it and uh it was fun as hell Clan battles back was then that, against. Sorry, so, was that the one that? Are you talking about the one you like? You kind of took over when we were in a clan with, um, if you remember Seth and. Yeah, that was yeah. EG or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that, that was our, introdu our introduction to clans, and that mm -hmm. was cool because everyone had EG before their gamer tag and whatnot, and just to see it that organized was kind of cool, and then. We decided we wanted to do that ourselves and build from the ground up. And we sort of 
did in a different way. Like we inherited a clan that was big and then they kind of fizzled out, but the co-leader of it wanted to keep going. And instead of letting a clan die, was just promoting with from within. But me and Brock uh, became like the two co-leaders with him and we were just recruiting people left and right and we grew it in crazy ways. And we battled against clans like KSI and whatnot, which at the time was probably the biggest uh, Xbox Halo 2 clan that I know of. We had a pro team. It was wild. Well, you win that conversation. But... <laughs> yeah, the only clan I ever really made that was successful filled all the slots was like a fucking Disney mobile game. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then some guy joined like Marlboro Man and he like started like trying to like tell me what to do and I'm just like, okay, this game's not fun anymore. Um, uh, play something else. Had a couple sh- crappy ESO clans, maybe, but I wasn't the the leader of them. But I was, you know, friends with the guy who was. But I also yeah, still I, play I just, Clash of Clans, and I still I was about to say, Chris, oh, has changed uh, his my clan leadership to Clash of Clans. I didn't we think. Need, I mean, I'll I'll play if somebody wants to fucking play. You want to play a shitty mobile game? Sure, just tell me. I'll I'll All right. I'll try. Oh yeah. Download Clash of Clans, I'll invite you. The clan okay. aspect is awesome. We have like Yeah, invite me. Invite me so I remember like to download a, that shit. A British coalition. <laughs> yeah, we do. We our clan it started off with just me, AJ, and a few others that are we know here locally, just part of the fam and extended friends. And it was very West Virginia centric, which is how it you nice. know, can only start that way, but it's become very international since and we've That's got awesome. We met an entire group of friends from the UK, and he invited all his friends. So we just have like a just a UK thing, and they invited to meet us if we ever went to the UK too, which would be wild. That's our name is our name is Montani Liberi, so it's awesome having all these Brits just <laughs> basically representing West Virginia. That's sick. That's pretty cool. I know nothing about Clash Clans, but I'm down to join. Yeah, let's let's all play. I mean, I I can continue where I left off. Uh... So I'll probably be okay. Case for Xbox as well, outside of Halo, because like I loved old Nintendo games, and of course my first console, I, you could count, was my dad brought us over his old SNES, and for oh, a while yeah. all gaming was for me was Mar- Super Mario World and Donkey Kong Country, which are two of the best games ever made. And then Bro, of course Pokemon. Yeah. You can't not mention Pokemon at some point. Oh, oh but, uh, it was on the list, right? Yeah, so we oh, got yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, my first console was technically like, like my parents had like an Odyssey and then an Atari, which Odyssey is even older than Atari. But the first mm-hmm. console that was ever bought for me was like a Sega Genesis. Before then, I would just go down to like this neighbor girl's house who had the original Nintendo and play Mario and shit. Oh, yeah, but, you're playing but, that Mario, like, man. Yeah, it, other than Pokemon. Did being like an actual crazy obsession and lifestyle for me like gaming up until the xbox was more like a just something to do on the side it wasn't really until xbox came out in the games that would be like morrowind and oblivion and yeah morrowind yeah morrowind was fucking a big moment in my life like that's when it became a disease for me yeah, that's when I first like became yeah, obsessed cause the, with because the cliff racers gave you that disease. Morrowind is still a tumor that I have yet to get operated out of me, and I don't the... really plan to get that chemo. I'm happy with my hair the yeah, way it yeah, is. Why would you? Those cliff racers bro. just spit on your butthole, give you the fucking disease of blood. I'm like, bro, they're living in a giant crab. <laughs> that's wild, dude. <laughs> then you got Fallout Three, Fallout Wait, really? Vegas. Yeah. Oh man. And then Fallout, just the whole franchise, the very first of that I saw of it, because I didn't have a PC to game on because we're poor people and I got gaming consoles, you know, half a decade after the new one had come out because then then they were cheap. You know, the first Fallouts I saw were on the Xbox. They were three hundred and sixty games. You know, Fallout Ooh. three yeah, I never played the old ones. Well, I did actually. I did, but I I never played them much. I now can say that I've almost <laughs> beat Fallout One, but uh, and I have yet to try Fallout Two. I hear it's the best of the old ones, 
So I can say I've played some old Fallout games now, but they're never going to hold the same place in my heart that let's the all, uh, Xbox Fallouts do. Let's all play uh, Icewind Dale, because it's got your name in it. I oh. know too much about that, actually. It's only $5 right now. It's on sale. Definitely Icewind spectacular. Dale. Guarantee You're, it. Uh, and Sean's of 10. buddy has that game. The, and the fucking, out of 10. Uh, uh, Asian guy who's on Night Shift in Korea. The fuck? <laughs> what, Hung Lo Wang? <laughs> <laughs> Something Wong. Here's a question. What game <laughs> in your lives, 3D, like a 3D type game specifically, was the first game that made your jaw drop in terms of like the change from a previous generation to the next generation of gaming where you're like, okay, now we're getting serious. For me Far Cry three. Far Cry three, that's a good one. For me it was Oblivion. When Oblivion came out I, cause mostly because I really was playing a lot of Marwind at the time, like Yeah. The, the jump from the the cause that was like an early three sixty game too. Uh, the just the changing graphics, the combat, how fluid everything was, how green everything was. It still to this day, I don't think very many games have blown my mind like that. It was it was good, but the problem with Oblivion, it's a very good game, and the, the gameplay is far surpasses Skyrim, I would say. But Even the with the potato people for the for the fucking human character or i mean the not the human i mean the elves and the keji everything you all you had this line on your neck right here that separated the textures on your face from the textures on your body you're like a fucking kin doll and you look stupid as fuck thank you kind sir <laughs> thank you. i would not have mentioned that or Dude, even, like thought i about love that. how <laughs> like they would have like a completely <laughs> like you would talk to like a beggar and they'd have this completely different like they Did would you just a coin for an old beggar Thank you, yeah. kind sir. It's the same guy. They just had four voice actors for the whole game. This is amazing. Bro, the you would think that Morrowind was the first time that I had a game that like a 3D game that just made my jaw drop and realized that gaming had evolved yeah. while I wasn't looking. But it was actually Fable. Fable one. I was gonna Fable say Fable one pissed me off. I loved it, but it pissed me off because it kept crashing my original Xbox every time. Oh really? There was, there was a scene where you like you, you like your whole family just died and you throw up every time you throw up, fucking black screen crash. At the very beginning, goddamn. Even yeah. the Xbox was horrified by what had just happened. It's like no, <laughs> she no didn't even get her this. birthday present. You're not getting a patch to fix this either. Yeah. Fuck you. You don't have internet. You're a bitch. <laughs> Just to <laughs> upload your fucking Smash Mouth CD onto your fucking Xbox. You, you download that shit so you can play it on the fucking menu. Bro, who else downloaded the shit out of some CDs onto their Xbox original oh, yeah. and yeah. that was the first played that era. shit. That was like my beginning to the, the to the actual fucking digital age. I had like, Apple I don't have to put... on that shit. Hell and yeah, yeah I, dude. I, I let I somebody Benjamin. I had an Avril Lavigne CD, but it was just because someone gave it to me. Like, there was this girl on my bus. She gave me all these CDs. She's like, my dad's a mailman, and he always finds these, like, CDs in the mail that don't belong to anybody, so you can have them. Like, I don't know what that means, but sure. She liked them forearms, dog. She was trying to hit that. You didn't even pick up on it. You're just like, oh, cool, CDs. (laughs) I, I put it on my Xbox, and then... I let Brian take it to church camp, and another one of the Christian kids broke it because he thought that Avril Lavigne was of the devil. So I had to listen to that on oh. my Xbox after that. She did say damn. <laughs> she did. <laughs> mm-hmm. I remember I it was right when LimeWire was a huge thing, so uh. I was torrenting all these songs and then putting them on CDs and then transferring them from CDs onto the Xbox like the federal government will uh, never find them here. LimeWire from the FBI. I don't even have internet on this thing. I <laughs> remember LimeWire. Songs that have 30 seconds that repeat over and over again and then also funny grandma videos and don't forget the beheadings. 
<laughs> yep, I saw all those or songs saw that were like full first one thing that were there. And I it, was never the same. Your again. favorite song. It always had your favorite song, even if it wasn't actually mm-hmm. your favorite song. It was just the clip of Bill Clinton. I did not <laughs> have sexual relations with that woman. Your favorite song, you know, the sound of a vending machine dispensing for twenty seconds. <laughs> well, yeah. What about? Uh, I don't know I'll what's happening. Back anymore i think sean wants to get moving and we're just fucking i have a question more so to adam and paul because you paul you brought up the atari and i think we had a brief exposure to the atari and Mm -hmm. like missile command and pong and stuff like that but oh yeah we had the special tourney paddles for the pong yeah but I listened to a bunch of other podcasts and I listened to this one about what basically ended Atari and it was um, the creators being pressed to create an E.T. game and it oh, basically going down as like the yeah. worst game Hang on. in history. <laughs> but <laughs> not so much that it was so bad, like it was okay for a time, but there was so much hype for it. He got it. He's there not, it not only does he have it, he has it at hand that he's just like, up? oh, you mean this right here? <laughs> Did you pick this that up from the prize possession? It's the only Atari game that I own, and I don't even have an Atari anymore, but I still have it. <laughs> well, Paul's, I been waiting. It. Paul's been waiting all his life for this moment. <laughs> for someone yeah. to ask about E.T. Yeah. on Atari. Dude, this should be buried in the desert somewhere, uh, that's but what here I'm it is. Saying. Yeah, they like there was a rumor that they w- yeah. were so bad they went out into the desert where nobody could find it and buried it. Just like yeah. shame along with That's they true. Made so many I've... of them and then just from word of mouth, like cause you, you should know, watch you the Angry Video that. Game Nerd yeah. movie. He talks about that. And um there were two games well three games as a kid that really scared me. This one, Atari, this scared me. Like, uh, you just, you got out of that hole and there's some, like, creepy looking fucking people chasing you. I just wanted to go back in the hole. Um, <laughs> I heard that. Also, continuously I was terrified. What? Sorry. What, what, who was terrified of holes? No, I heard that was, like, part of the game where you just fell in a hole a bunch and then you'd have to get out and oh, fall yeah. back in uh-huh. and then get out and then be chased and then fall That's... in the hole again. That was ninety percent of the game. Um, <laughs> for some reason, I was oddly like I hadn't like at one point in my life we put the Atari back down in the basement and hooked it up to a black and white TV, and I played Pac Man Junior on that shit. And for some reason, Pac Man Junior scared me. Like I was just like in the basement, and like the sound that the fruit made when it came out on the screen scared me. It was like. Da, 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 da. It was like a weird thump. I can't explain <laughs> it, but I was scared of fruit and Pac Man Jr. <laughs> that's hilarious. The only game that's like truly terrified me was probably, um, I think it was Resident Evil Four, maybe whatever the one was where yeah. you had that like, uh, radio or some shit, and any times you know you had a flashlight, you only had a visible, um field of view that was like that flashlight and whenever zombies or whatever would get close to you the static would grow louder and you couldn't fucking see like them and then silent hill too uh, silent hill okay, yeah, silent. Yeah, okay. No, that's that was i was about to mention that is for being the scariest game i ever played really at that especially at the age i was i don't think i can get scared from games like that anymore but yeah uh, silent hill I, 2 was like terrifying kind of Never played that one, but I played uh, the PT demo that, yeah. that was actually supposed to be a Silent Hill game before, like, I don't know what it was, like PlayStation was, or, or, or Konami or somebody was firing Hideo Kojima because he's just too brilliant of a man. And that... he never got to make PT, but that shit scared the fuck out of me. That came out in like 2013, right? I don't know, but I know Zach's. The the guy who lived with Zach for a while, uh, Dakota, he had like the demo still on his PS4, which apparently people will pay pretty good money for a PS4 with that demo on there. I I don't remember if it was that 
game? I feel like it was. Is there was a baby either, in the sink? It was either that or if it, or maybe like the <laughs> Slender Slenderman games. I, I can't remember. <laughs> it, it was one of those. I don't know. I think it might have been PT though. I can't think of the the Slenderman games were not that scary looking. Well, no, maybe no, no, not no, the one that Donkey played at least, like where so, he's finding like pieces of paper on the yeah, note and it says like "can't run." He's like, "I know I can't run this game. You're fucking slow as shit." Is there one that says "can run"? It's like a power up or something. <laughs> you saying? Sorry, go ahead. You saying Slenderman? Just from do you guys remember Shadow Man? Oh, yeah. that game oh, yeah. kind of scared oh, me a bro. little bit. Too. I think that was I some creepy. Nightmares about Shadow Man, Man was fire. We played a lot of that. On that there was that, and then oh, Kane, the, the Soul Reaver guy. That was pretty crazy, too. I remember you had to have that thing that you put into your N64 to save Shadow Man, and we were too poor and didn't have it. So <laughs> if we wanted to play Shadow Man, we just had to leave the N64 on until we beat it, and we never did. Oh, somebody's going to bump that shit and ruin your day. Oh, man, like, there were so many times they're like, well, you weren't playing it, so we turned it off. We're like, you fucking what? <laughs> that was like 12 hours of gameplay. Now we have to do it all over again. Back to the blood lake with the little screamy <laughs> things. and that was the first Come on, terrible. slow poke and the, all the, that other shit. The worst is when it happens when you're playing. I'll never forget me and like my friend. I think we were playing uh fucking uh I can't remember the game, but it was on the original Nintendo. And my friend's brother comes riding a bicycle through his fucking bedroom, hits both of the cords attached to the and the Nintendo controllers, and just the whole Nintendo flies across the room. And we're just like, Seth, what the fuck? Whoa, cowabunga, bro. Gnarly, my bad. <laughs> wiggity, wiggity, wiggity. <laughs> okay, so a uh, couple thoughts on the conversation. Um, Are we recording this now? I don't even know what's happening. I never stopped recording, so hopefully you guys said some funny things while I was in the bathroom. Yes. We might have said some alarming things. I'm noticing that the oh, uh, little bear emoji for the recording <laughs> bot looks concerned now. Was he always concerned? Or has so, his yeah. face just slowly become less happy as he hears us? Like, oh, God. <laughs> we actually oh, talked about Marwin. Sean, do you have any Marwin stories? Mm. Um, Watching Marwind. me, probably. I remember my. I remember playing a lot of Marwin. Um but I, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna say I, I played a lot more Oblivion and Skyrim than I played Morrowind. If I'm remembering right, Morrowind was when you could actually go kill anyone. That that living god. What was his name? Vivek. Vivek. Well, you could kill Vivek. both of those. But, but oh. yeah, I remember Vivek specifically because I remember <laughs> I, I had that cheat code on that would give you infinite health, but it wasn't enough. He would still murder you even if you oh, had yeah. that on. And so, mm. but then I, on Oblivion, how did you kill him? You said it'd be better than him. I don't know. Like there yeah, was you a, just had to whoop his ass. Better so, than cheat so. codes. Yeah, I'm, well, yeah, dude. You, you be sh so like, while I say that, like, you had the cheat code for infinite health, but if you were still weak, yeah. So the health code, uh, it just it was constant regeneration. Like, like you it wouldn't, wouldn't die. You just wouldn't kill him. No, you would die. Oh, no, you die. It would just, oh. yeah, like, the cheat code, all it did was regenerate your health at a uh, steady pace. Yeah, okay. pretty fast. Like, so you, you, if you hit zero health, you'll still die. But if yeah. you hit one health, you'll get to 100 in like 10 seconds. Yeah, well, Dale knows how to be strong in that game in like 10 seconds, but the, you just uh, you use the spell to turn all your skills to like level one and then pay somebody like That's cheap true, yeah. to train you to fuck up. The drain skill oh. technique. Yeah, Bro. he taught me that. He's gonna talk. He'll talk about that. There are ways. <laughs> there are many ways. That game lets you break reality. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I loved it. No other game that I can think of can you kill gods and trap their souls in like pants <laughs> and make that. I think that's something so interesting about games that that stuff is somehow through intention or not just programmed into the mechanics of the game, like being able to 
cheat that way or even just glitches like in Halo and Halo 2 and like those mm-hmm. Easter eggs. Like I remember Halo 2 with matchmaking and everything, whole games were centered around getting to a certain spot you yeah. could only get to if you glitched there and then it would just be like a free for all with like or BXR. Oh, yeah. Yeah. BXR, yeah. that's what it was. I was re- yeah. trying to remember. BXR. And BR, yeah, that, uh, they established that oh. it existed and probably shouldn't have. They're just like, no, nah, this is going to stay a major part of the mechanics. This is there was the thing where you could either switch like the sniper rifle or the rocket launcher with the sword at the last minute. Uh-huh. And you would rocket launch cancel. across the map. Yeah, that, was, yeah. that was crazy. All right, so... We're going to shift gears because we've got approximately 10 to 15 minutes left of recording. No I want to talk about, because we, we, this entire time, essentially, we've been talking about games of our childhoods. You know, it's been a lot of fun. Hmm. What modern games are you playing? What modern games are worthy of talking about right now? Like, for instance, I know my wife and kids love. Legend, the new Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, and Tears of the Kingdom. So when Tears of the Kingdom came out, I took time off of work to go get my wife the new game because she's uh, recovering from a foot surgery, so she's uh, on the couch. She's not supposed to be moving around. So I was like, here is your game. And they've accumulated upwards of almost 100 hours of gameplay already. And... I I've seen some like hilarious things online because there's a building mechanic to it now where that's new for Legend of Zelda games and there's just some hilarious uh antics going on. But that aside, what are some modern games that you'd like to talk about? What are some modern games that you're playing now that are worth talking about? So when you say modern, like the last couple few years at most? I'd say three years, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Cyberpunk 2077 lately since they've fixed it almost entirely since launch. But that's been my whole obsession for like the last month. Uh, on PlayStation 5, I played the hell out of Ghost of Tsushima, which kind of was the first game I played that felt like a next-gen game with all these new consoles. Uh, trying to think of another one. Bro, do you oh, remember man. how much time... Oh, oh my god, Elden, Elden, Ring. Ring. Elden Ring. Oh, how could I not talk yeah. about Elden Ring? That I game changed my life. That. I have yet to play it. I heard so much good about it, but I've, it happened to come out right when I was losing the time that I would need to play a game like that. Yeah. It's a yeah. Little big time sink. Mm-hmm. It, uh, I used, I, I, I'm not going to lie, I used a lot of the community and the internet to help me out with terms of like, because you can get lost and truly like waste time and not get good at that game by going places before you should or uh there's a there's a resource collecting and upgrading and crafting mechanics that you need to do there's i don't know but once i got the hang of it it just became impossible to put down and kind of eat not want to say easy to play the the combat is still super hard as always but uh yeah playing it blind you could get lost and never really get your footing I played it mostly blind, and I was definitely lost a lot and very Dang. frustrated. And the last thing that happened to me before I had to quit for a while was like, I, like I think the volcano manor people wanted me to be a hit man. I think that means I'm evil, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, exactly. T- Tanith, I think your name is. Yeah. Uh, oh, the, what I did a lot was I've you know I'm on YouTube and I'm looking at all these players that have specialized builds, and you watch how those builds work in combat and you're just like wow i could do this all the day or you know maybe you're you're super you you like strength based builds or dexterity and range combat or you're a mage and everything there are ways to like okay i'm starting the game from scratch i know i should go here 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 and here and you can get pretty good pretty early and it definitely helps the game's difficulty dramatically makes it way more playable unless you're like obsessed with the insane difficulty of it all I'm not. I actually get really mad if I can't beat something within the first 10, 15 tries. I understand yeah. that. <laughs> I think I screwed myself by going uh, like the magic build on that when normally I do strength. And then like later on I found a sword and you know I'm like, you know what? I want to use this. 
So now I'm just like a jack of all trades master. And it's 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 like traditional D and D type, you know, with attributes and everything is like determined by chance and stuff. And the, there's numbers and stats to everything, so it all matters like what you do, what you pick up, and I feel like this group here. I've I've only played D and D um, very very minimal, uh, maybe a couple sessions of one campaign, but. From what I did play, it was fun. This group right here, us six people, would make a hilarious D and D campaign. That would be fun. I've always wanted to play it. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I've, tried. I've never had anyone who wanted to play it with me who could be the DM. I'm like, that's the hardest. Well, yeah, like, yeah, we need, need to find experience. a DM, but I would love to play D and D with you. Eric yeah. Drain. That's oh, true. Lord. I did say we could just let like chat GPT or whatever be the DM and see what happens. <laughs> That'd probably be best, honestly. Not really, but that would definitely We work. would break chat yeah. GPT very quickly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do they a filthy uh, chat GPT? Yet? Oh, break it like that. <laughs> yeah, I feel like yeah. that would be the biggest issue is we wouldn't be able to have our own kind of banter and jokes. Mm-hmm. So if any of any of you know a DM that would be willing to actually host a campaign for us because because that's the issue right like being a dm on top of knowing all the rules and all the like mechanics of everything yeah. you also have to literally build a story and mm-hmm. that seems very difficult to do unless you have a very long time to do it you know if you're very prepared maybe um i'm sure there's like, a good bit of improv too there's a ton yeah. of it I, for instance mm-hmm. the one dm that I, I was like the one campaign that I ever played. I I, I decided I was gonna be a, a a little bitch cleric. That's exactly what like uh. the, the role I was playing. I, I wanted to be a fraidy cab everything. <laughs> and so like there was a fight. It was our mate, our very first like boss that we were gonna have uh, an encounter, and everybody was all prepared and everybody was ready. And- you know, he had the DM made this big long thing about how long it was going to take. It was going. He told us at the end that it was going to take us about two can- or two sessions, which is like an hour to two hour long sessions to beat this guy, and that's that's astronomical. But what I had done because I you know was learning the mechanics, I could summon celestial uh, monsters. So I summoned the celestial bear because I, I learned that. I could summon it in any location. It didn't have to be on the ground. So I summoned it above the boss and it fell onto him and killed him and squished him by gravity. And so, yeah, because the DM was like, you can't do that. And I was like, well, it says right here, I can spawn him everywhere I want. And he, he was like, oh, damn it. And he just like, that was the end. That was the last did you, session. Did you have did. to still roll like dice to determine how? It squished him, like whether it like it, missed it was or not. Up to the DM, and that he let me do that. He let me roll to see like if oh, it was going to okay. be effective, and I got like yeah. an eighteen. And he's like, F- "Fine," and so like I uh, okay. it, it killed okay. him. So it was it was fair then. Yeah, it was but fair. He's going to have to suck being the DM and have this whole oh, story. <laughs> laid right, out he spent forty eight hours yeah. working on this <laughs> fucking battle. <laughs> Ooh, Wait a minute, so, uh, how you about I squish also... you with a space bear? What if you summon the bear inside of them? but anyway so just, yeah i i got way off topic because i was going to talk about modern games but i guess D is a modern game you know i whatever. mean it's still played yeah, it's today timeless. like on the topic mean... of modern game uh i want to ask what you guys think of the thing i shared in the chat with uh that modder adding chat gpt to npcs that help you you can create uh, uh oh completely that's... unique uh communication with npcs that remember previous conversations and react in real time to the things you do around yeah. that was on sky that is right? the future yeah, yeah that, that, i think that, that's super cool that, yeah i can't imagine anything better for an open world game with npcs to bring like real life chat that yeah. version of chat gpt is going to take over the world i and just they, wonder like, they're going to base everything off of skyrim no i, I mean, how skyrim is sense. still like the 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 fucking uh, petri dish for so many mods and stuff and experimentation. Yeah, I mean, because what el- what other big like RPG 
games even are there other than Skyrim? Like, you know, there was The Witcher 3, I guess, but like, but like, I think a big Elden part of the Ring? RPG is being able to make my own character. Yeah, there is Elden Ring, but that's like a bit less accessible for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I think that uh, Skyrim being the Petri dish is partly because Bethesda. And I, I don't think that this maybe this has something to do with why they're not releasing more Elder Scrolls games yet. But like they always made all of the game's files available in a construction set and just said, all right, we encourage you to make new things out of this. Like, I can't think of another game very company. Community friendly with mods and experimentation and stuff. I can't think of another game company that just is like, here are the guts of how we make games. Do it yourself if you want new things, and we will fully support your ability to mod the shit out of everything we make. Except they disabled the achievements. (laughs) We started talking about um, Battle Royale games, and then you brought up NPCs. Christian, did you see that game I shared with you? I can't remember what it's called. What? Deceived Inc. Is that yeah, where you pretend where you can, to like, be an NPC and it's a battle royale game and like you uh, have to act like you're yeah. a bot, basically? Yeah, it looks like uh, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood uh, multiplayer where you have you have to assassinate someone, but someone has to assassinate you, so you have to blend in yeah. while hunting someone while being hunted. Kind oh, of a genius cool. concept. Oh, yeah, I did play that Assassin's Creed game that was like that. Yeah, I know what you mean. That was the like, next generation that problem. existed. Yeah, yeah, it was like an online only Assassin's Creed game. Yeah, it was, on, yeah, it was like matchmaking. It was so much fun. And you can Crazy. pick your, you can pick your NPC or whatever, and then if you walk into a crowd of preachers, <laughs> you turn into a, one of them while you're walking yeah. around. Yeah, it's just cool as hell. That's great. Yeah, that there's someone at work crazy. that wants me to play that game that you're talking about, though, and it, it sounds Seed fun. Inc. Yeah, it does. It's that, sounds even, that sounds even crazier with like you talking about NPCs getting chat, PT, uh, chat GPT involved with them, yeah. like, becoming more he- human in a sense. And just like it yeah. get to a point where it's like really hard to yeah, at least what's human and what's not. That would be good. I mean, is it going to be just like conversation wise though? Or are they actually going to move more? I think it's more too? like how you move in in the game <laughs> yeah. right now, from what I can tell. But it's hmm. all great. Sweet. I'd not heard of that. That sounds pretty fun. Yeah, all news to me. All right. The last thing we'll talk about. Uh, before we wrap it up, I'll go around the room. I'll start with Adam. Top game. Your top one game. If you had to put it, you had a gun to your head. What is your top one? Oh, man. Oh, man. It's so hard to pick just one. That's why I said it. Um... (laughs) This would, you know, obviously would change like from day to day. Oh, but right now. I think the most consistent one that would come up Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. Nice. I can Man. just play that game over and over and over again and I have I've played it on so many systems. I just got a Vita a couple months ago. I put the PS1 version on there, and I, that's what I play whenever I take that out somewhere, like when I have to do laundry or something. That's just... I, it's so... The formula of the two-minute session to try to get all the goals... It's just hard to beat that. I mean, there are other games that are more polished. There are other games that have better mechanics but i just i've probably played that more than any game ever skate games are so fun man i played underground probably much more but i i've loved those tony hot games a lot underground was really good yeah i got a awesome lot of story. music back in the day from tony hawk games oh, yeah. that Great shaped soundtrack. my whole music taste honestly I can right, see that. AJ, you're next. Me? No, the other AJ. Oh, I can. I didn't hear if you said that. But uh, listen, listen. We were talking to the other AJ. Be quiet. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, right now, I'm probably going to have to give it to RuneScape in terms of like dedicated time. And I've gotten back into it so much and like paid for a membership and just really gotten to explore what that has to offer. And that game is just immense. And the community involvement, like there were, it was so funny in terms of like reading people's movements. I was just doing dumb shit when I got into the members world and there were people that were just like, what are you doing? <laughs> and noticed and they're like, let me tell you what you need to do like where you need to go and so i made friends on there um like one one guy from england and he's like helped me out so much soul trap 99 he's my boy and uh just he he's shown me so much and it's still being updated and having the grand exchange in there and everything like an in-game stock market like there are websites dedicated to um, tracking the Grand Exchange value of items and their services that people pay to boost their accounts and bots and everything. It's just got it. Anytime I get back into it, it just feels like a warm blanket by the fire. Like it's been waiting to draw me in. And I, it's got quests, but also sometimes just grinding on a skill and just zoning out, being on my phone, watching TV, and just sitting there mining or chopping wood or something still just brings me this like cathartic release that no other game really does. So Damn. It's one of my favorite games of all time. You make me feel like such a noob at RuneScape. <laughs> I'm I'm level 81 now. I got my account back, but when it updated, you had to start out um, from scratch again. But that was almost the most fun because, like, that's so yeah. fun at the beginning too. Just leveling up each thing, left and right, because of how the skills scale. You know, like someone told me that once you get to like level 70 something, is halfway, which is interesting. You know, because I have no idea I, what level I am. Yeah. I, you must have played far longer. Like, I only played, like, probably, like, I started playing, like, maybe, like, five or six years ago, maybe at the most, I would think. So, Sean they used to haven't pay reset me. it since then. Sean used to pay me, like, items and, like, GP <laughs> in the game back in the day um, to like level up his hunter skill or something and be like go catch implings or something like that or like I oh, nice. hate it, Slayer. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. I used to play RuneScape way too much. Absolutely way too much. Oh <laughs> man. so great. I remember we used to have to argue about whose turn it was because we all four were trying to play RuneScape on the same old shitty <laughs> computer. The old man, RuneScape a... GTA San Andreas cycle. Yeah, yeah. That was it's our like, summer. Summers. Like, they yeah. Just we rotate. Just, yeah. Yeah. And then, like, so, just one more thing. Let me, let me just get to this one place and I'll stop. And then, like, half an hour later, yeah, but I, I just got to do the one more thing. I remember when you used to not be able to see, like, how much XP you had next until, like, uh, mm -hmm. your next level. And then it'd just be like, let, let me get to this level. And then maybe that was, like, 30,000 XP and you're just killing the same monsters over and over again or something. It's like, dude, you've been playing for an hour and a half. <laughs> Get off. So do you do you do like the, the Iron Man or the hardcore Iron Man? Or I didn't even mess shit? with that yet, but that's down the line for sure. I'm super interested yeah. in Iron Man. Because that's, that's like the, the purity of the game. Like you can't use the Grand Exchange. Yeah. You can't use the bank in some instances. That's like hardcore Iron Man. And just like relying <laughs> on what you have and having to do like level up your levels legitly to do certain quests and stuff like that is just insane. Yeah, that's all new to me. <laughs> all right, we're moving I watch. on. Oh, we're sorry. All right. God. Paul, go ahead though. Wait, what's your nah, number that's one? That's not important. What's your number one? Oh, what's what's my number one? Uh, it's Ocarina of Time. <laughs> you were ready. You had the props. Yeah, I got the props. You can't see it. I would play it right now, but it'll wake people up. Um, Ocarina of Time, definitely for me. Like I remember 
Like just like it was, uh, you know, the only Zelda I played before then was probably on the original NES, and I got to play that very briefly because it was just like, you know, my neighbor she had it, and I just got to play it very little. But like going from like that to like a fucking fully 3D Zelda game, like it it just has one of the most magical worlds I've ever been in. Like the the music was all great, all the boss fights were just amazing while now you know i've done it so many times that they seem uh, pretty simplistic still like the first time like in in the last castle you're just like ascending these stairs and you just hear like this creepy ass organ music playing and you're just like going up this long ass spiral staircase until eventually you just see like the back of the sky like hunched over playing an organ he just like turns around and he's like yeah i'm here to fuck you up kid and and then just all hell breaks loose and it's just one of the most epic experiences of experiences of all time and just like i'll always remember the day that i beat that game like i never thought it would come because as a kid like it took me forever to even go into like the first like like the the tomb of like the 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 fucking like Hyrule King's tomb or whatever it was like there were like these zombie things I was scared I was so fucking scared like that game scared the shit out of me but I loved it so much I had to just like face my fears and beat it like the creepiest shit I've ever seen the rated E game for sure what I loved most about that game is even though it's small by modern standards the map was just big enough to feel like a huge adventure. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, just small enough that you could memorize, like, every square inch of it. Yeah. And you could be just, like, at home <laughs> in it. It was great. Yeah. The first time you, like, step into, like, the field, like, after you, like, beat the first dungeon and exit your little fucking, like, forest village where you were raised and you're like just in this big open field like i'm like and there's like a day and night cycle as well i'm just like all of this shit is like brand new to me and just blew my mind I i've never actually... played a single legend of say, zelda game never never in my life have i ever played a legend of zelda yeah. game it's a big regret i'm, it's I'm thinking great, about it's my favorite series for sure but yeah, followed closely by and... elder scrolls breath in the wild and tears of the kingdom look so cool and, yeah, uh, it makes me feel like I'm missing out. Right. Yeah, so you can fun. you can really start anywhere, you right, know, right? Like the right. timeline's all whacked, anyways. That's if you're true. trying to there follow some really sort of order, timeline. just just jump in and play. Christian, you're up. All right. Uh, I want to start off by saying uh, my dad was a gamer when I was a kid, like hardcore kind of, uh, and he played. Uh, Ghost Recon competitively, and he started a clan with his boys called the Xbox Mafia that he actually played in clan championships with. And so, when Age and I were kids, he had us join that little community. And of course, that's a multiplayer competitive shooter, and just the adrenaline that you'd that you'd get by being decent and having you know your dad's friends be like, "Dude, that was, you're getting good. Like you're just a kid." I became kind of a junkie for that. So, you know, I've played a, a lot of games, and I, if I had a list of my favorite games, they're mostly single-player experiences, but uh, I think that when picking my favorite game, I'm going to go with Halo 2, and I, I, I think that uh, that's mostly because of the online community and the multiplayer aspect of it, but, like, when I think of what makes, what draws me to a game the most, is there's a sort of... Uh, you know, the whole getting online with your boys and playing together with other people, that is my favorite thing about gaming most of the time. And I don't think any game did it better than Halo 2. And I don't think games can be that way because the internet is so, like... We're not going to have LAN parties where I invite, like, 10 of my high school friends over and we're all plugged in on the same router and we're all playing four-player split-screen. And we're playing Xbox Live when we're not able to do that. Uh... That, and then it also has a campaign and a story that picks off from Halo 1, which is another one of my favorite games. So yeah, Halo 2 is the answer, and I'll always be a, a fan of really good multiplayer competitive games. Good answer. Good answer. 
AJ? Oh, yeah. I wanted to say real quick, honorable mention in terms of Xbox Live shooters like that, that really got me hooked and addicted, and it was something, Sean, you and I, and Tim a lot too, would play a shitload of Conquer Live and Reloaded. You remember oh, that yeah. game? That game was oh, yeah. so fun. You could piss on each fun. other. <laughs> yeah, and it was so raunchy, and you're just like these little <laughs> cartoon squirrels and fucking shit. I was or very sad when, or you, whatever. when they shut down the servers for that. I was like, oh shit, man. That's a lot of fun, though. Was that the one with like the Omaha Beach? Yeah. Or is... Oh, God. That was so much fun. Yeah. You could probably play that or now. I think they still have it on like Xbox or something. You could play it, but the, they shut down the multiplayer servers, and so like that was the big thing. Even like with the, Rare Replay, yes, the, the multiplayer servers are gone. Huh. Uh-huh. that was a big issue, and that, I remember whenever we played a lot of that. That was a very fun game, and I was really excited for that game because I played a lot of it on N sixty four. And uh, whenever I found out they had an Xbox version, I was like, oh, I gotta get that. They and, did uh, that like specialized classes so well to like having different you know classes of fighters like big gunners and the riflemen and just, that was a lot know, of fun. All right, Dale. Oh my gosh. Well, my answer is never going to change. It's Morrowind. It's always been Morrowind. I knew that. I have a single player. I knew that. Like I have, a, I have a single playthrough that has more than three hundred hours in it, and that is not my tenth playthrough of that game. I. <laughs> have wasted large swaths of my life. But it was just so... It's not even just the RPG aspect of it. It's that the world is so different from any other RPG you're going to find. It's not, you know, medieval England. It's not uh, Lord of the Rings copied and pasted. It's its own unique world with this blend of, like, Middle Eastern cultures and Imperial Rome and just it the mechanics were just ridiculously broken exploitable. Yeah, you had to get used to it. The fighting is clunky. But when you know what's going on behind the scenes, there's a lot to it. And the story I mean, the other Elder Scrolls games that people play. I've never played Daggerfall or Arena. Most people haven't played. I've played a little bit of it, but... You know, the three big Elder Scrolls games that are out, they all have good stories, but there was something really compelling about the build-up to the end of Morrowind that wasn't there in Oblivion, really. Oblivion got grindy, and Skyrim's just kind of all over the place. You know, by the time you finally get to defeating Alduin, you're just like, I really don't care about this dragon. Can I go back to fighting a civil war? <laughs> you know? Like they Marwin couldn't decide what they wanted to do. Was the first game I ever played that was a real true open world. Like go anywhere, do anything. And that blew my mind. Still to this day, I just it, I don't yeah, I don't think any game did it before that for me. I never played any PC games, so I know there's a few on that, but Yeah, same same for me on the like other than Ocarina of Time, but yeah, it was much different when you got into tomorrow when you could just like literally go in any direction and find something just insane to like, you know, like I just always remember I don't know if like it was me, but like I, I feel like ninety percent of the people, like the first thing you do, you just like run into some guy who just like flies out of the sky. I was just gonna bring that up. Remember that ground. guy who just falls out of the sky? And you're just like, oh, well, I guess I got a new robe and hat and fucking yeah. little, little and then, lightning and then sword like, here. You pick up his scrolls and you click yeah. one on X, and he's like, I wonder what this will do. And then you jump <laughs> and you launch into space. Yeah, and that was uh, the first thing I ever die. did in Marvel. Yeah. yeah, you're just like, whoops. I'm just like, this game is wild, like, immediately. Like, this is fucking for me. And then, like, you're just like, you you kill, like, one of the main characters, and it's just like, well, now you live in a doomed world. Do you want to continue? I'm like, sure. (laughs) And then I just just proceed Mm -hmm. to, like, become a vampire and kill every single person I meet. Never, ever beat the game. 
but I played countless hours and had a shit ton of fun. I want to, I want to eventually beat it the right way love, one day. Me too. Me too. I've never actually done that. And that's kind of crazy to me, but I do wish more games did that where there is a main quest, but there's so much to do outside of it that you can kill a main character. And it's just like, yep, yeah, your game, as far as the story goes is done, <laughs> but have fun. <laughs> do whatever you want to do regardless yeah i was fine with that when i was a kid i'm just like whatever i'm just here to fucking fuck i'm just up here to get world. my archery to level 100 or marksman and just <laughs> shoot people from a distance yep. that's all yeah. i wanted to do yeah, it didn't hold your hand it didn't force you to do anything it didn't that's yeah. something that i noticed with a lot of other elder scrolls well the other two elder scrolls games they either held your hand a whole lot or you were kind of forced to do i'm thinking of skyrim here like in yeah. order to unlock parts of the game you were kind of forced to go the path that they wanted you to hmm. it's the yeah, same trajectory sure. that the fallout games took where in fallout 3 you could basically just wander off and you know give a fuck about the game at all yeah. and still fallout have a great time and weird. then fallout 4 I don't even know if it counts as a traditional RPG because you're not making yeah. your own role. You're f it's like an adventure game. You have a role designed for you. They were definitely moving in that direction. Yeah, they're just like, go find your baby. And I'm like, I don't care. I just want to have fun. Mm -hmm. I don't, don't want to be a... I care <laughs> way more about my dad in Fallout 3. Hell, in New Vegas, I cared more about finding the guy that shot me in the head. And you got less interaction with the guy yeah. that shot you in the head than you did with your own fucking baby in Fallout 4. But in Fallout 4, it's like, well, <laughs> yeah. go find your baby, but also build yeah. a city. You don't and have... And like, hey... <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, fucking Preston. But, you like... have a lot of urgency to the game until it's time yeah. to gather glue to make turrets yeah. to protect two guys who won't leave a single patch of watermelons that you have to defend <laughs> for some reason. But find your baby. See, I, you know? I, I have more hours in Fallout 4 than I probably do the other two, even though I agree with everything that's been mentioned. Like, it's just, it has its drawbacks, but it has also ways in which it, it's better than the other two games. Oh, I'm not trying to say that Fallout yeah. 4, I definitely have more hours in Fallout 4. You've seen, I bricked an Xbox One <laughs> completely <laughs> with did. a Fallout 4 save. I just, Damn. I got that survival character to level like 104. And that's why you don't have an Xbox now. That's why I, I haven't same had thing a gaming console. About Skyrim, in, too. I know. What, I'm, five years? I actually love Skyrim. I think I might like it almost the most. I know it's controversial to a lot of people, but it's I I kind of am kind of that casual gamer that I don't need my handheld through the whole thing, but I do like a little bit of direction. And I think that's why I didn't end up beating the Morrowind quest as much uh, because I might have an, a slight ADHD to me and I just get distracted and I can't focus on the thing. But I mean, also... Skyrim was just also the kind of way that I play a games like that. I'm always like, it's super good when it comes to stealth and archery. And that's just, you know, being a stealth archer is a meme at this point. But uh, Skyrim, I, I, I ever play that all the time. And I don't even touch the cam. I do think that's its weakest point. But uh, my most recent Skyrim playthrough, I'm like level 70 something. And I haven't even talked to the Grey Wardens or whatever they're called, the Greybeards. Uh, I just grind because the grind is fun, and now they added fishing and stuff like that. And I'm like the shirtless dark elf who just builds a home and grows things and is super rich and owns all the property and is max level everything. And it's just a a game that I can play without thinking about anything at this point. Just live. Oh a yeah, slice of life. The music mm. and the ambient sounds. It's just kind of a perfect game for me. All right. Um, as much as I love the conversation about Elder Scrolls, I'm going to have to interject, and I guess I'll I'll give my favorite game, um, which is kind of a kind of a toss up, because it's difficult to choose between what I spent the most of my time on, or what I have the fondest memories of because like 
I don't know. It's a hard toss up. I mm-hmm. so what I have my toss up between is RuneScape because yeah, we have a us four, so Christian, Dale, AJ, and myself, we have played so much RuneScape in our youth. So much so that we we played the old school RuneScape or the original RuneScape before the old school RuneScape <laughs> and before the RuneScape three that's out now. So two D RuneScape, and, and I remember when we transitioned from that to the the newer RuneScape, the old school RuneScape. Now, like that's how long we've been playing it. Two thousand four, I, I think it was. Yeah, I, I was curious when people are talking about yeah, RuneScape Classic. I'm like, is that the two D one with the paper sprites? Like, yeah, it's, but yeah, but no, San Andreas it, just came out, and we were playing that in RuneScape all the time. Yeah, all the time, oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. and I don't knock RuneScape. Um, the only issue I have with it now is I anytime I want, I have this small thought like, oh, I should uh, let me jump on RuneScape and try to play it a little bit. I'm like, I could do anything else in my life, and it would be more beneficial. Than playing Huge RuneScape. time suck, and that's all. That's the only thing I think about when I think of RuneScape now. So there's that, and then I think of Call of Duty Four Modern Warfare. Now that's a weird one for you know that's out of left field, but hear me out. Call of Duty Four Modern Warfare. Uh, in high school, I remember when it came out. I think it came out in middle school, but I, I remember playing it a lot in high school with my friends. Um, and we, you know, we had a clan, we played, you know, I don't want to say professionally, but we were in some pay leagues and stuff. And I, I played it so much that even I became a referee for some online esports games for it. I played it a ton. Prestiged, uh, if you're familiar with Call of Duty, I prestiged all the way up to the max level possible in Call of Duty 4. I had all the golden weapons, all the achievements, whatever say you. You know, I I loved that game. And then I, you know, I joined the army. And in Afghanistan, we're playing LAN parties. People have Xboxes, and we like we would just drill holes through the little shanty uh town, you know, little homes that we had and connect it. You know, we had ordered uh, cables through uh, uh, Amazon or whatever the case may be, and we would just connect land, humongous land parties in Afghanistan, and play Call of Duty Four. It was so much fun. So I I feel like Call of Duty Four probably is my favorite game, my my most beloved game. Today, however, it would not, it does not stand the test of time, mainly because of. Uh, hackers and uh the inaccessibility to the game i don't know it's just no longer it doesn't hold that i I wouldn't play it today like i like i I remembered playing it but it it holds a very special place in my heart i remember back in the day having arguments like when that came out and it that just became the thing we played so much just like What's better, Halo Two or Call of Duty? Modern Halo Three. Warfare. Yeah. Halo yeah. Three versus. Yeah. Modern Warfare is. I played both. I think it's safe to say that Call yeah. of Duty is probably better than the newest Halo. Yeah, it's definitely. There's a still like the the Call of Duty I mean, community is still going strong. There's CDL is going on or just ended or something like that, and I've there's a whole pro world that's similar to the way MLG Pro Circuit was for Halo back in the day. And I have a couple friends who are obsessed with Call of Duty and keep up with the news regarding it. It's still going strong. I don't even play it. I I don't play I'm not a big fan of the Battle Royale type games. I like playing PUBG with all you guys back whenever we used to do that, but I don't... That was a lot of fun. I don't really do anything like that anymore. So. All right. Last closing comments, anybody, before we get out here? Yeah, uh, Paul, uh, download Clash of Clans, send me your friend code, and I'll invite you. Everybody. Just Paul. Fuck everybody. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I feel like he's the only one who expressed interest. I know, Sean, you kind of did too, so you you as well. Oh, okay, thanks. Even Adam. Play this terrible mobile game, please. 
<laughs> candy Crush. This is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. It's a Candy Crush invite. We didn't even talk about Pokemon. We and, got and another thing, another honorable all. mention: <laughs> uh, the Creeper hoodie in the background. I'm sure we've all spent. Oh, uh, Minecraft. Minecraft. How could oh, you not man. talk about Minecraft survival Rise games? Oh, well, we clearly have a gaming favorite. three to go. <laughs> oh, we mm. could. Yeah. Well, gaming two, because the original gaming episode that we filmed, Dale, or that we recorded, did not get aired because I thought it was dumb. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. so this is the first gaming episode we've put out. Yeah, it was fun oh, doing it, cool. but I don't know if it was fun listening to. I yeah. was editing it, and I was like, "Wow, this is really dumb." So I just didn't. <laughs> Still Unless I'm deeply always... concerned about something I've said, I try not to listen to the podcast because it's really gay to listen to my own voice. <laughs> we so, so I try very hard. Three. The and... the gaming episode was going to be a contest episode. Oh, where... that's right. That was that contest. It was the contest yeah. episode, and at the end of it, Adam won, and he got to spin a wheel that I made. Uh, online, where, where I say he spun, I clicked and he it spun. But he, it was a prize wheel of nonsense, and I was supposed to send him a book. <laughs> I was like, hey, "Good job!" And, and it was really <laughs> fucking dumb. It was really dumb. So we I didn't think, add, did not air that. I think you should just read him the book one chapter a night, every night. Adam, would you like me to read your book? Do you want a bedtime yeah. story? Maybe. You the know, man who looks, right looks now. like he does. Wife yeah. or a hat is the name of the book. So. All right. Thank you all so much for joining. Uh, we have to close it because we started recording at 1039. It is 1211. So we'll see how much editing gets out of here. Thanks, everyone, for stopping by, and I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Check us out on Instagram if you'd like, and if you found today's episode entertaining, then why not go check out some of our other great topics like McDonald's Fired Us All or the medical industry. Both our leading episodes are for viewership and downloads, allegedly, um, according to my tracker. So thanks so much for joining us, and have a great day. Bye. Yeah, I never got fired from McDonald's. Thank you very much. Just kidding.